What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're gonna be going over the brand new patch notes for Diablo for the mid-season patch note update. I've been at work and I just got home. We got our, our gear a little bit ready and now we're gonna go over all the patch notes for you guys. Just kind of give my thoughts and just what I think about this. We're not gonna be going through absolutely everything um, in great detail, but I'm gonna highlight a lot of points. So. Um, the patch notes were released today. These are going to be going live in three days on the 17th, which I'm very excited about. Now, before we get into anything crazy, um, before anybody asks in the comments, yes, they did not nerf Heartseeker. We are safe for the remainder of the season, and I cannot be more thrilled. So shout out to the devs for uh, not nerfing Heartseeker. However, I will have to prepare myself for next season when they do actually nerf it so let's get into these changes and just kind of talk about these as we're going along um this is the season of barbablo so uh just know that there is hefty barbarian buffs but let's go highlight a lot of this stuff so the healing potions um these got really good buffs i think this is pretty cool um i don't know if people were really struggling with this but i think this is pretty much to help counteract the all the poison issues that have been going on in the dungeons in particular the pit dungeon so i'm glad that these got a buff we'll have to see how this plays out um which is really nice um barrier cooldowns were reduced for certain aspects but i'm not going to highlight a lot of that let's go over these big one here for all us rogues on has got a huge buffs two big buffs the damage is increased by 50 percent, and then now spawns on the enemy instead of the player so if we go in here and take a look look at good old andy's here so it says chance to trigger poison nova that applies poison damage over five seconds so we're getting a 50 percent buff to the 24,000. um i don't know if they're just going to take 24515 and just add 50 percent or how they're particularly going to adjust it but it is going to be a 50 percent buff so i'm super psyched about that so andy's flurry is in full force okay Doombringer, the shadow explosion damage got increased by 100%, which is pretty nice. Actually, Doombringer was pretty much just really just for the life gain, which was making, you know, characters' life pools, especially the barbs, insane, somewhere over 138,000, um, which is really nice. So we'll have to see if this actually makes it do just a bit more damage. Ring of Starless Skies, the minimum sacks of resource cost and bonus damage increased from 4 to 5. This is actually huge. Now we're getting a 50% buff. For damage and a 50 percent reduce cost which is really really nice um i think it's really good man um the increase to the maximum amount of resource bonus is up so we got that right uh Tyrael's might increase barrage or the barrage the divine barrage is increased by 100 percent. super cool which is nice uh stat requirements for non-main stats reduced from 90 to 60 per paragon board so this is a big one going into the middle of the season. So a class's main stat that is one that increases damage of all of their skills. For example, Sork has intelligence. So this change affects, affects their rare Paragon nodes that have threshold bonuses for dexterity and willpower. The stat requirements to activate any rare, nord, rare nodes increases for each additional Paragon board, which is why it's very particular in which order you put, you know, board one to board two to board three, because those go up. But some of these nodes require non-main stats, which are harder to activate. So, like, for example, on a rogue, you really, your dexterity, right? So, it may be hard to activate a particular node that's intelligence, for example, or strength, um, without, like, investing in it too heavily. So, you lose out on your dex stuff. So, I'm really, really excited about this. This should make um, Paragon boards a little bit more accessible and change how we kind of customize our boards, which will be really, really cool. Now, let's get into what everybody's been waiting for in the video, and that is the class buffs. So, again, we got the season of the Barbarian. It's Barb Ablo, not Diablo. It's Barb Ablo. So, Barbarian, the strongest class in the game, receives some increases, buffs across the board for multiple skills, including Frenzy. And Flay got a big buff, super good. Whirlwind got a huge buff, super good. Um, the passives got some really good buffs here. Uh, some of the legendary aspects, especially for Dust Devils, that was nerfed, but now it's buffed again. So pretty cool there. Uh, man, Barbarians just uh, just keep getting buffs, man. It's kind of crazy um, with some other classes just being left out. But yeah, Barbarian, huge buff. Druids, 
um, it's almost just like small increases, right? Like small little increases um, on the the spirit boons. Now, yes, these are buffs, which is pretty cool, but these I don't think are are enough to really improve the overall druid. And for a lot of the different builds, this isn't going to help druids, you know, push farther into the pit. It's going to make some of the builds feel better while you're playing, which is really nice. But outside of that, it's just kind of like just adding some quality of life, essentially, to the build itself. However, Pulverize did receive a damage increase, which is nice. And then uh, a little bit of changes to the overpower, which is cool. It still sucks that pull, uh, like overpower itself isn't as good but i love pulverize it's my favorite build for druid so uh i'm happy to see this this is nice some good key passives here uh just but again it's just literally just uh some quality of life stuff to make the builds just feel a little bit better right uh some aspects i think probably the boulder build is probably going to be one of the strongest for druid so there's a little bit of improvement there paragon boards got some nice little stuff dominate which is huge the damage damage bonus after an overpower is increased by another 3%, which is good. This was originally nerfed coming into the season, so I'm glad to see this getting a little bit of a boost. Necromancer, some changes to the Book of the Dead, all increases, which is fantastic uh, for Necro Minions. However, we all know that Necro Minions is super powerful, but it is good to see these overall quality uh, improvements, right? Paragon, same thing, some really nice buffs, guys. Now let's get into Rogue. Very, very excited about Rogue, okay? Um, I've been having the most fun playing Rogue this season. I haven't really got a chance to play Rogue really to its full potential since Season 1. I didn't really play it at all since Season 1. I did play it here and there, but just not enough. Uh, I am excited to go back to Twisting Blades and just check out Twisting Blades. The initial damage and return damage is both increased. Flurry also increased, which again is going to make the Andes build even better, even though the damage from Andes is pure poison. Uh, but the Flurry damage itself is just going to be nice. It's just going to make the build feel even better, right? Um, then some really nice key passive changes, especially with Sturdy, to make rogues a little bit tankier, right? The Mending Obscurity is a little different. Um, I don't know how. We'll have to test to see how good this is while we're stealth and every second while we're stealth. Uh, but that's kind of nice. And then Lucky Hit no longer redirects damage to proc. will also work on DOT effects, which, again, Andes is just going to be insane. Versatility, big buff there. Fluidity, explosive, big buff for our Grenader build that we did. Oh, oop whoops domination seemed really really good oh uh, gosh yeah yeah or excuse me not domination diminish so those are really nice blade dancers again we're going to check out twisty blaze finally because blade dancer got a huge increase here another 20 percent, which is pretty nice um grenade damage again i think the grenade build that we put together which is a little outside of meta is is going to be kind of nice here with the uh the buff so i think that's really good tricksters again more grenade damage um and shrouding got a little bit of a change here super good now let's get down to sorcerer now as you guys all know who have been following the channel or maybe new here watching this video sorks got got snubbed to me they got snubbed man um sorks have been snubbed since the beginning of the season with all the vulnerable issues the legendary paragon node issues and then just some of the powers like uh storm swell which has just been really struggling for sorks so we haven't been able to really do a lot with the class there is the immortal sork firebolt build shout out to makuna but besides that there's not a whole lot that sork gets this season um so damage is really far behind especially against basically bosses and single target damage all the builds struggle i know that there is builds that can do a lot of damage but i'm just thinking for end game pit pushing and doing all the end game content that really really matters all the sorcerer builds can definitely do the bosses, which is pretty easy. But uh, Sorks just didn't get any skill buffs. They didn't get any kind of like big boost, no changes to any of the skills or builds in particular. Just kind of a lot of same thing with the Druid. It's just a lot of quality of life passive changes to kind of make things a little bit better. Like a little bit more shield, a little bit more bonus to inner flames, a little bit more bonus to you know, Chris strike a little bit more bonus to veers, but this stuff isn't enough to really change the, the Sork class in general. It doesn't even give it a boost up through the ranks. I still think that Sork Sork is maybe just barely outdoing Druid as the second worst class this season, only because of the immortal Sork. And that's just a cheese build. Cause we're just redoing 
flame shield over and over and over again. Um, but hopefully there's some stuff coming in the future for Sorceress. It's kind of a bummer. Um, and then a lot of these unique items, even though this stuff got boosted, uh, we're never going to use the overflowing cami uh, cameo. Staff of Endless Rage, so Bouncy Fireball will be a little bit better. Gloves of the Illuminati, they're a little bit better. And then Flame Scar. Actually, you know, when you really think about it, like Incinerate is actually kind of like decent now. It's pretty good. I got some community members that are um, doing some pretty cool things with Incinerate, and they love it. So now on to the part that I was most happy with besides the non-nerf to Heartseeker is the end game content, which matters the most. Health and damage has been reduced in the pit for all of the monsters, including the bosses. This is very significant all the way up to tier 60, so more players can fully participate in master working. So it just appears that they're adjusting the pit because they want a smoother end game progression because not a lot of players are able to push all the way up to 100 or level up their gear. Um, it just seems like the grind for the pit might be taking a little bit too long, so this has been changed um, up to 60. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen after 60. But up to 60 is all yellow. So you get your Ingolith up to 60 at 61. Then you get the Neath Iron, which is the legendary ones. But up to 60, you could farm probably pretty easily and get all of your stuff to at least level 8. So I'm very, very happy about that. All Tormented bosses have their reduced health by 30%, and this includes the blood boils from the uh, Echo of Lilith fight, which those things are crazy strong. So big dub here for the pit. I'm really curious to to uh, kind of test this out. Bug fixes, Holy Bolt, uh, damage was scaling unintentionally. Finally, this is getting fixed, especially for Necromain, so sorry for you guys. Um, so that got fixed. The Dolmen Stone stuff with boulders is fixed. However, uh, I think there's still some players that are reporting that it's not fixed entirely, but I'm happy to see this change. And then for us rogues this season, Rapid Fire is getting a huge fix because sometimes the projectiles would just basically not hit close targets, which is really tough for fighting bosses or like trying to speed farm big, large mobs. So I'm glad this is fixed. I'm building uh, Rapid Fire next. Uh, so I'm really, really, really happy about this. I think this is big. We've been calling this for basically since the last patch. Um, but it also increases the radius of explosion by 25%, which is going to make speed farming with this build even better. And then, of course, sorry, druids and necros. The pets are no longer counted as minions, so big bummer there. But yeah, guys, these are the patch notes. All this is going to be linked down in the description below. I'm really curious to see and hear your guys' thoughts. So like, let's get this over 50 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Let's get the conversation going. Because the more feedback we can give to Blizzard, the better we can make this game. Um, but overall, my thoughts are is I think overall it's a good patch. The biggest negative takeaways are for Druid and Sorceress. They both kind of got snubbed. Um, but, you know, time will tell. Maybe Druid will feel a little bit better with the Spirit Boons and stuff. But I still think Sork is just really snubbed. On the plus side for all Barbs, Barbablo this season is great for Barbarians. Uh, Rogue, big dub on Rogue. A lot of good stuff for Rogue. Um, Necromancer, even better stuff for all you minion lovers out there. Um, and then just the just the end game, man. I think overall this is a dub minus the stuff for Druid and Sork. I think that's probably the biggest comments I've seen reading on Twitter. It's just a kind of a bummer for both of these classes right now. They're just really struggling. Uh, so hopefully there's some improvements coming for both those classes. So, um, but yeah, guys, comment down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Let's get the conversation popping. And don't forget to sub, guys. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.